Hello everyone. This video is an overview and only an overview of the modifications required to upgrade this rotary table for CNC use. The details are in the instructions that are printed below. It will talk about corrections such as how to remove excessive backlash, run out, lack of bearing preload, etc. It will not talk about how to upgrade your CNC. If you'd like information or assistance about adding a fourth axis, or if you'd like to know more about my super durable five axis system, send me a message on Instagram. The following video is based upon my 40 plus years of machining and engineering. There are better ways to make some of these modifications, but these are the methods I have chosen. It's also been four plus months since I've made the modifications and have tested the rotary extensively. And I'm pleased to say I've had to do no modifications, corrections, or repairs to it. It's still performing well. This video is meant to assist you with the modifications to your rotary. They're actually fairly easy and required average machining skills. Meaning that the hard part of this, the engineering, has already been done for you. The worst you can do to this is to maybe screw up some eccentric bearings or bushings which will only run you about two bucks a piece of material. And this whole process is completely reversible. You can bring it right back to the day you purchased it. All the documents will be available from links in the description box, as well as a time index, which will allow you to come back and view particular sections of this video. I have replaced my four drawer with an ER32 it takes up less room, less weight, and it works better for me. Um, since this video is going to be dealing with machining, we're going to be dealing with inch units, except for the bearings. Now, at the time of this publication, there were three affordable models available on the web. That is the belt drive system, which brings in a 1 to 2 to a 1 to 6 ratio. Um, drive belt driven it doesn't hold a lot of torque and I don't recommend it for anything other than wood the next option is a harmonic drive and they come in only in a 50 and 100 to 1 the problem with that is they are extremely slow because of this ratio we really can't provide the motors with enough voltage and amps to get them up to speed so I'm passing on that style. Lastly is the gearbox style. I have gone with a 20 to 1 because that gave me sufficient speed for using it as a lathe in the future. But I also knew that it had excessive backlash. But my background gave me information on how to make this stuff go away. It's fairly simple to correct. These gearboxes are normally produced in China by the millions. They're usually seen in such items as rototillers, snowblowers, very lightweight, light duty. But they're produced in such a high number that they're actually consistently precise. Now, you'd say, well, why is it terrible for a rotary? Well, because they are meant to run at high speeds, they put sufficient clearance to allow for thermal growth. We don't need to deal with that kind of heat. Now let's talk about terminology. There's a worm and a worm gear. That's what I will be calling those two items that just passed on the screen. Um, you can use for the most part, just standard tools. There's a couple of items that are out of the ordinary and I've listed them. Um, these are the items in the gearbox that we're going to be fixing. Um, I recommend if you do have a rotary table, um, 
make all the measurements and write them down so you have a starting place of where you are going and where you need to be. Now, the first place I want to start is by taking care of this bearing preload. Um, I have no idea why it's that sloppy, but it's easy to repair. It's also important that you follow the directions and the order in which I've gone forth. Uh, going out of order will just cause you headaches and rework. Okay, so let's take the gearbox apart. The first step here is to remove the drive motor. If you'll notice, the through hole, which is in yours, is capped on mine. I print out plastic plugs and I plug all the holes in all my stepper motors. These things are not uh, cooled by any internal fan. Um, that hole is just there to provide access to a longer shaft, uh, which these motors don't have, and they just allow for chips to enter into that back bearing. So I cap them. I've capped them for four plus years on my other drives. I apologize for mounting my camera to my workbench because you're about ready to see that's not a California earthquake, that's just a camera shaking. Okay, um, let's not lose that drive key, retain it or put it away. Now is a great time that you have access to measure the worm and play. Um, the overall distance of the worm in the bearings versus the gap in the gearbox housing uh, allows for some play. There's not a whole lot, but it really contributes significantly to the backlash. Very easy to remove. Now, grab a screwdriver and put it in your rotary table and feel it. Close your eyes, imagine and remember what it feels like. That's your goal. When you start adding all these modifications, it can't be any more difficult to rotate than what it is when it was new. Um, okay, so let's drain the oil. There's very little oil in this thing. There's about two tablespoons. I just pulled that out of my pocket, I think. I'm also pleased that I didn't drop it on the table. I'm looking to see, where's the oil? It's there. Now, we're gonna remove this motor adapter. The oil seal is still attached to the bracket that we're removing don't need to take that oil seal out and even though at some point in time we're going to add eccentric bushings that oil steel still seals wonderfully my gearbox has not dripped a drop of oil I can only speed it up two times while I'm unscrewing this so bear with me here I think I'm going to show you that there is not a quart of oil. Oh, not yet. Now you can see here I have my eccentric bushings on already. Yours will have the factory bushings, uh, bearing, excuse me. So yeah, I scratched off one quart and wrote one ounce, which by the way is two tablespoons. All right. Remove your bearings, your front bearing, put it aside. You are going to need to measure it. Even though I have provided sketches, uh, I'd really like you to verify that your system is the same as, as well, mine. Um, tapping out that rear oil seal, it's more of a oil cap. Try to be gentle with it because I can't find that part anywhere replacement part that is 
Okay, remove this uh, rear snap ring once we clean up the oil spill. I was surprised at how clean the oil was. I'm surprised that this bushing is a little tight. It was a slip fit when it went in there four months ago. I guess technically it's a light press fit now. I don't know if it picked up a burr. Too impressed at how quickly I can tap. There is a right way and a wrong way where these bearings or eccentric bushing go in. I'll talk about it later, but I'll start now. There's a counterboard size side of the eccentric bushings where the replacement bearings slide in. Those counterboards face outside, both the front and the rear bearing. Counterboards face outside, to outside of the to the gearbox, not inward facing. Now I'm removing the, I guess we'd call it the chuck adapter. In my case, it's an ER32. Oh, um, yes, there's a keyway, but no keyway on the shaft. Maybe someday I'll add a keyway. It has not slipped at all, and I've been using 3 8 end mills, um, mainly because I want to A, test my system, and curious to see if it slips now here you may not agree with how I remove this oil seal this oil seal has a static and a dynamic section to it the dynamic section is where it just sits and seals the outside surface I do not want to go near the rotating surface that little spring I'd much rather damage the outside which can be easily corrected with a little bit of silicone or sealer now we're removing the worm gear assembly snap ring. On mine, there is a single bearing preload shim, which you'll see. Oh, so why am I marking this? This bearing assembly can go in forward or backwards. And if we're going to start modifying the system, let's remove the variable that could uh, contribute to error. So let's mark which way it went, came out and let's put it in that way. And you'll see the preload shim. On mine, that factory shim was a 12,000 shim. 10,000 shim, excuse me. That back oil seal can stay in and time we're done and when he can see the parts you'll see some parts my bearing preload shims on the top left there the factory bearings okay this really surprised me on just how much so I've reassembled that back that back uh, that bearing gear box excuse me worm gear assembly with the preload one and I've measured it for slop um, I don't care how you cut the OD of these shims. Um, you can scribe them with a pair of calipers. All you need to do is cut the OD a little bit smaller than the size that's required, which is uh, 47 millimeters or one inch 850. So I think I cut mine around one inch 800. So I guess that's 19, uh, 24 thousandths. So the way we're gonna handle this is we're gonna make two eccentric bushings and replace the bearings with something that has the same ID, but a smaller OD to allow us to put this bushing. Now here I've already cut the OD. I then moved the four jaw 15 thousandths and I am now cutting the ID 
what I have chose to do since I only have a little watchmaker's lathe, I'm using um, bushings. So all I have to do is just remove a few thousands. If you want to do these in your shape, Oko, there's a real easy system that I have used for years, uh, making a little um, ellipses in, in um, carbide create. Um, very simple system to use. We can talk more about that if uh, you want to learn more about that. You can actually go to my Instagram. Now, I've taken a, a, a carriage bolt and hand ground it because during the system, we're going to always be curious about that worm pressure, that worm assembly. So uh, you start off with, on my case, 19 or 24 thousandths. I installed the bushings. I rotated them about, about, about mine eventually about 90 degrees. Um, and I ended up having to move mine all the way to the full extreme to get them tight enough. Now, unfortunately, when I went to rotate the worm 20 odd turns, I found a tight spot, which meant that it was rubbing on the worm gear. So I cleaned it, put some dicom on it, ran it for a while, looked at the wear pad and realized that it was touching on the OD of the worm and on the minor major diameter, major pitch diameter on the worm gear. So I just stoned a few thousands off the OD. Um, so once we have the backlash taken care of, the next thing item that we're going to deal with is uh, the fact that that chuck adapter runs out. The face run true, but the actual chuck ran out somewhere between five and seven thousandths. I just turned that OD a little bit shorter. I replace those damn washers that the base plate um, that it was sitting on, on between the base plate and the gearbox with a nice little piece of aluminum to get it level to the table because those washers were all over the place. Um, as you can see here now I've put the chuck on just to show you that it also runs true. And if you are using a tailstock, you need to make sure that the centerline height of the gearbox equals the centerline height of the tailstock. Now, nah, within a few thousand, since it's just a center, but I think it's good practice to try to get it as close as you can. And as you can see, Mine's pretty damn close. It's within one. Now, if you add a four inch rotary table to your system, your system only has three and a half inches of height. Uh, there's a half inch interference here. Uh, just here, just showing you a picture of some of the tools on how I measure my system now so what I did was I hand filed a notch in that gearbox to allow easy access to get those bolts out since I change between chuck and a, a four jaw so these are the riser blocks that I've made and it gives me um, about four inches nine hundred thousandths clearance about an eighth inch over the over the chuck which I really use but still is the adapter plate on the left that I need to clear and that's it that's everything that we've done um look at all the documents read things over again this is a fairly simple set of modifications but they're robust and you'll be really happy with the end result you end up with a two thousand dollar plus rotary table thanks for watching have a great day